Let me grab me a cup of coffee, and then we're going to have a little fun, girl. All right, coffee, have a little fun, and then I got to go pay some bills and be an adult today. All right. I have tried to film this video like three times. I keep, the dogs keep barking, people keep coming, so I keep like stopping and pausing. If I repeat myself in this video, I apologize, <laughs> but you know, I don't even know what to say about that. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to review for you guys the Spear Farben pencils that I got for Christmas from Amazon. Spear Farben, I have no idea if that is the correct way to say this, but that's how I'm going to say it throughout this review. So if that offends you or bothers you, then you might not want to watch this review because Spear Farben, no idea, but it sounds awesome. So we're going with it. This was a 72 piece colored pencil set and I thought they were like $28.97. I know in my last video the price was not what I had said and I corrected it of course. I will leave the link below if you want to check these pencils out. It came in this really pretty tin. I showed you guys in a haul. Inside the tin there are three trays of pencils. Now I took my pencils out of the trays. A lot of people leave their pencils in their trays and in their tins and it works great for them, but you know, this is just this is just me. On the back it says artist grade quality premium pigments, bright vivid colors, the color numbers on the pencil, deep saturated colors which I can attest to, oil based lead 3.3 millimeters, creamy texture and non-toxic. And I guess I got these mixed up with the fabric castell I thought these were made in Germany. Maybe the name got me or something. But on the Amazon site, it actually says they're made in China. So it came in that really pretty. So I put mine in this. This is my little shoe laner organizer. It's got the little four compartments, the nice zippers, the little, you know, strap. I never used to carry a strap, but it's really nice, really sturdy. And I've made my little color swatches, and this is just easier for me. I want a pink, I want a red, I want an orange. I know exactly, you know, where they're at. I'm not picking up tray after tray, you know what I mean, to find the color I'm looking for. Even when I made these and, you know, tried to organize the trays, it just seemed like it took a little bit more time than, <laughs> and I don't know, this is just great for coloring on the go for me, so. I also have a blue one for my Prismacolors, and I really like these. I will leave a link below if you guys want to look at these. Um, there's also another brand, the exact same thing, but it's a different name uh, for the same exact price. So, But I put mine in here. I also put my Faber-Castell pencils in this as well, just because they're oil pencils too, and there was plenty of room in here. I think this holds 168 a um, bit like there's places I have, you know, places for two so you can get a little bit more of it. And then I have five Karen Dache Luminance pencils that I went ahead and put in here. So, because uh, the Prisma one was full. So I kind of mixed them up. So on my little swatches, it does say Karen Dache, you know, FC for Fabric Castell. Okay. Let me scoot you guys down just a little bit so we can do the pencil part. Okay. So here are the pencils get here. The pencils look like this. It has the name, the brand, and then it has the number of the color. And also, you should know that there are no names on the actual pencils. There's only numbers. So, just in case that's something, and the lead is really nice. It's thick, nice lead. It's not um, fragile like the Prisma colors. I remember when I got a black one time, I sharpened it. I the whole one pencil, one black pencil went through one picture. It came broken and I sharpened it and sharpened it and it was just cracked on the inside. And that was before I knew that we could heat them up and fix them. And you know, I got a lot of uh, heat on that video that I did about the microwaving your pencils. That just works for me. Of course, every microwave is different. The voltage is different. If I'm saying you 20 seconds for a brand new pencil, of course, if you have half a pencil, you're going to do like eight, 10 seconds. You know, you're not going to do the whole 20 seconds. Or if you have a higher voltage microwave, it's you're you're leaving it in there just long enough to heat the wax up so that it can be melted back together so it's not cracked on the inside or whatever. Some people use the microwave, the oven, a heating pad. Some people take them outside and let the sun, you know, kind of melt them when it gets hot or in their car or something. But people were like, uh, you, you can't leave it in there 20 seconds. And I'm like, well, no, you're just going to heat it up till, till it's heated up for you. You know, I would like test it like eight seconds, you know, but anyways, 
I accidentally dropped one of these pencils and I guess it wasn't hard enough or far enough because it didn't crack and fracture on the inside. I was like, oh dear, when I dropped it, I was like, oh no, but it was fine. Now, this one I took out of the case and I accidentally hit it on the table and of course, you know, it broke the lead off, you know what I mean? Because it's still oil, it's still a pencil, it's still, you know, you gotta still treat it nice, okay? But they're not as delicate and uh, fragile as a Prisma, but Prismas are my favorite. That's what I started with, so. Sorry, I got interrupted, but Serene book came. I know this has nothing to do with this uh, review, but it's been on back order for those of you that have been trying to get it. I finally found it off of Etsy. My son picked it up for me. He was actually shopping for some posters, and he bought it for me. So, of course, I had to stop in the middle of this and um, look at this gorgeous book. I know. I'm so excited. So, anyways, back to the review. So, sorry. So let's talk about the colors of the pencils, and then I'm going to show you guys some swatches, okay? Okay, so here are the grays, for instance. So there are um, the light gray, medium gray, dark gray, and then the black. There's not really a light gray like this. This is the, the Faber-Castell. So when I needed a light gray, I just used this one, you know, and pulled from there. But you do have light, medium, dark, and then a black. And then the browns. The browns are actually really nice. You've got a light golden, medium golden, and then like their burnt umber, chocolate or sienna brown, whichever one, and then a dark umber, and then just dark, dark brown. You know, so pretty nice on the browns for sure. Blues, you got a nice light blue, turquoise blue, a violet blue, and then even like an indigo, you know, so pretty good. Greens are very nice. You've got like bright lime greens, true greens, apple greens, and then even a gray green to like a mossy green, you know, so, but this is something, so they don't have names for their um, colors. I just put these in the order that I thought like, these are the two lightest, right? And this is Spear Farben 012 and then 038. So they're not really numbered in order either. The Prisma colors, they're not numbered in order of their, you know, colors either. So I'm not sure how they numbered them, but just something I thought I'd point out. It's not a problem or anything. I just, I thought I'd point it out, okay? And then here is the purples. Now, again, I just put these in my own order. But none of these are fabric castells. So, got light purple, medium purple, pink purple, even violet. You know what I mean? So, a pretty nice selection of purples. And then the yellows and oranges are really nice. Cream yellow, bright yellow, and then golden yellow, and then golden yellow orange, and then even down to pumpkin. So, and then reds, a nice good selection of reds you know, bright reds, darker reds, and then they even have their own version of like the Venetian red and then a dark red. I had no trouble finding a red. And then here is their white. Of course, you can't see it because it's white, but it's there. And then three peaches, three pinks, and a brighter pink, and then like a darker pink, you know, so pretty nice actually. Okay, so I just finished this picture from the Hidden Paradise book by Chris Lopez. You can see these colors are very rich, vibrant, bold, beautiful, really pigmented. They lay down really smooth and they just blend really nicely. I didn't want to just review like one paper, you know, one book with these pencils, so I did a couple more. I also did this picture here. This is the Bursting Midnight Enchantment by uh, Mardell Rubio. Again, that red is just really rich and beautiful. The green is very vibrant. And then the purple, the colors are stunning. And it just lays down so smoothly. So I didn't try these on my Tanya Bond or my Hannah Lynn yet. I got these two books for, these two books for Christmas are new. And I really was just itching, you know, to color in them. So I did. So when I started this picture, I knew that I wanted her to be fair to lighter skin. I used my Spear Farben, you know, around the edges, the shadowing and things. But when I got to her skin, I noticed that when I was pulling pencils, there weren't the options that I was used to. So here is my Prisma colors. And then here are the Spear Farben. Okay, so like the Nectar, I could make one of those work for Nectar. As far as like ginger root or the peach beige or even the seashell pink, there's not really a shade like that in this 
little set. And then also on the yellows, the 73 here is like the lightest without so much yellow undertone. And it's too dark to be like cream, but I could use it as sand, you know. And granted, I could, you know, make a brown and purple or even a pink and create like a clay rose or something. But there's not really a light peach or deco peach in this little set here. Now, I used my Prismacolors. If you don't have another set of pencils, you might have a harder time creating a fair skin tone with just this set. Now I'm doing another picture now with a darker skin tone and I'm having no problem finding all of the pencils in this little set that I have of the Spear Farben alone. So that's just something to think about. I used my Prismacolors over the Spear Farben right here on the outside. I can see where the Prismacolors is kind of sitting on top. It's not completely blended into the oils. Now this the shirt here, I used my Fabric Castells first, and you can see I used this beer farben over this, and it blended in perfectly. You know what I mean? So, I don't know if you guys can see it. She doesn't look bad, and it's not like it's, you know, going to, it's not rubbing off or anything. It's just something that I noticed. But I also wanted to see how well these pencils worked with my Karen Dache, my Prisma, and the Faber Castell. So I used all of my pencils on this paper. Now, a lot of people say that these are very similar to the Faber Castells, and they are in the sense that they're both oil based pencils. But I do find that these seem like wet compared to the Faber Castell. Like the Faber Castell is a little bit more of a dry oil. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'll show you what I mean. Let me see if I can show you what I mean real quick. Okay, so like here is a yellow Spear Farben. A nice light layer. Okay, so there's the yellow Spear Farben, okay? And then here is the yellow Faber-Castell. I'm just making little light circles how I do. Okay, so there's the Faber-Castell and there's the Spear Farben. Using you guys in a little bit so maybe you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, when I use the Spear Farben over Say we're going to shade this little part of this Faber-Castell pencil. This is a shadow, pretend. Okay, and then I'm going to use the Faber-Castell over the Spear Farben. Okay, so this is what I mean. When I use the Spear Farben over the Faber Castell, the black is still nice and dark, still pigmented. When I use the Faber Castell over the Spear Farben, it's not as dark. It's almost gray now, like it's lost a little bit of its pigmentation. Like the oil in the Spear Farben is just a little bit more, you know, um, top surface than the Faber Castell. That's kind of what I mean. And you can see it when you lay them side by side as well. Here is the Faber Castell. And then here's the Spear Farben. When you lay them side by side, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it as much on camera, but in person, you can really see it. Can you see how the Spear Farben looks a little bit wet? See it right there? It has kind of like that more wet appearance. And the Faber Castell, even though it'll shimmer in the light right there, it will, but not as much. To me, the Faber Castell just seems like a, it lays down like a more dry oil. And the Spear Farben, not wet, but it's almost like wet. I want to say waxy, but it's not wax because it's oil. But Spear Farben just looks a little bit more wet on the surface, and Faber Castell looks a little bit more dry. So that, that's my, my thought. When I try to put the Faber Castell over the Spear Farben, it lost a little bit of its color. It looks a little bit more gray now, you know what I mean, than actual black. And it didn't actually keep all of its pigment. Now they'll blend really nice together. 
You can take the Fabric Castell Brown. And it'll blend just fine with the black spear farben. See there? They blend just they blend just lovely together. I mean they just meld right into one. So let me go ahead and show you the Prismacolor and the Luminance as well. Let's do let's do brown because I'm closer to that page right here. Okay, and then the here's a Prismacolor. This is the chocolate Prismacolor, and that's let's remember that this is notebook paper. This is not like coloring paper, so it's going to even be better on actual you know coloring book paper. But we're just using this to kind of show you guys. And so that's the Prismacolor, and then here's the Spear Farben. You can see that they blend really nicely together as well to um, this. When you have a Spear Farben pencil, try not to make too deep of a layer here. Okay, there's the Spear Farben. And when you put a Prismacolor over the Spear Farben, this is a Prismacolor um, Pumpkin Orange. So it didn't lose as much of its pigmentation, but you can see it doesn't look very smooth. Do you see what I mean? It kind of looks like it's just sitting on top as opposed to blending into the oil pencil. And now if you look at the Spear Farben over the Prismacolor, this is Prismacolor Deco Yellow. There's Prismacolor Deco Yellow. If you put that down first and then add a Spear Farben on top of the wax of the Prisma. It just lays down a lot better. That's what I mean by, see it blends okay. It'll blend in just fine. And um, they, I just find that if you put the Spear Farben over your other pencils, it does seem to look better and lay down better. You know, this one, it looks fine. You know, I mean, the Prisma over, it looks fine. But you can definitely see that it's kind of laying on top as where this one looks like it's blended inside. You know what I mean? In together. So, that I don't know if that helps you guys at all or not, what I'm trying to say. But, um, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Let me show you a luminance now. This is the 10% olive brown. And then here is 68. And you can see side by side, they blend just as well as the Prismas and the Polychromos. Now here is 17. And then with the luminance on top. Okay. Okay, so there is the luminance and the Spear Farben. So the luminance actually looks better on the Spear Farben than the other pencils. It's it is kind of still sitting on top, but it does blend into these a little bit better. I noticed that I it looked better and I got a lot better results when I used all of my other pencils first and then put these on top. So now that you've seen the way they kind of blend and you know layer, let's talk about the pros and cons of these pencils. So I have okay here is a new pencil. Is that a new one? Let me make for sure. Okay, so no, this one is. I'm sorry. Okay, so here is a new pencil that I've never used. 
here are the three main ones that I noticed that I used quite a bit with these, you know, three or four pages that I'm doing. Okay, so there's those. Now you see that black is, you know, it's over halfway and then the red's halfway and the yellow is just a little bit under. But I mean, I colored a lot with these colors. Okay, that, that red surely. But anyways, so to replace that black, I have to purchase an entire set of these pencils, you know. They don't have open stock, so that's just, you know, that's just one of the cons. On the Amazon website, someone asked, do you have open stock? And they answered, no, not yet, maybe in the future. So that could very well change. And I can see why the price is so good, because they're only pouring sets. They're not pouring a bunch of individual pencils and then waiting for them to be ordered. You know what I mean? But I do hope in the future that they at least have, like, the black the white, the red, and then maybe even the darkest gray and then the dark brown because I do shading and shadowing with those, especially like Prisma. I do 90% warm gray for shadows or the sepia, you know, or something. So I do hope they offer at least some like base colors, you know, in open stock. But I'm going to definitely be repurchasing these. I think they're absolutely beautiful. And I do want to purchase another set just in case the price goes up. So I know, but yeah, so those, that's, that's one con is there's no open stock. Um, and you know, if you have other pencils, you know, and you're not using those every single day, like I've been doing the last couple of days, it probably won't be a, you know, a bigger, big deal to you guys. But so then the, uh, the next con that I can think of is the lack of fair skin toned pencils. This is a new company. Maybe they wanted to see how they were going to be received. The formula that they have is absolutely beautiful. And they've been received very, very well. So this time next year, they could come out with a 150 set and have, you know, a cool gray and then other lighter skin tones, like the light peach, deco peach, and maybe a ginger root or something, you know. So that could change as well. But those are the only two cons that I could think of. The pros are that the colors are very rich and vivid. This formula is very creamy. They do work well with your other pencils. For me, it was just about which ones I used first. The price for 29 bucks for 72 pencils, that's a very good price, considering that Faber-Castell is 24 pencils for like 36. If you've been wanting to try the Faber-Castell, a lot of people say, you know, this is like the next best thing. I didn't start using Faber-Castell. I'm new. I have just a small set, but I can see that um, now that I have this set, I'm not itching so bad to get a larger set of the Faber-Castell. And if you read some of the reviews, people that were that started using the Faber-Castell and swear by them really, really like these and recommend these as well instead. So. Those are my pros. Those are my cons. Yeah, I hope I covered everything. I know I'm going to turn this off and be like, oh, I should have told them this or that or, you know, whatever, but hopefully not. But if you have any questions, yeah, leave them down below. Anyways, thank you for watching. Have a fantastic day, a fantastic weekend, and I will see you next time. Bye.